Hello third graders. Today we are going to start our last unit in math in third grade. That is just amazing. You have learned so much this year. Good for you. We're going to do lesson 9-1 today and it's called plain product pile up. So we'll work on that in a little bit but first some mental math and fluency. You're going to need to go get your whiteboard marker and eraser make sure that it's handy so for each product write as many factor pairs as you can so what that means is the product is the answer to a multiplication problem your task is to write as many multiplication problems or factor pairs as you can that has 9 as a product and 12 as a product Pause the video while you do that. Come back when you are finished. So what did you get for 9? 1 and 9 and 3 and 3. So these are the factor pairs for 9. And the factor pairs for 12 are 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. Now the factor pairs for 32 the factor pairs for 45. Pause the video while you write those down. So what makes 32? Well, 1 and 32. Ladies and gentlemen, the number 1 and the number 32, they're always going to be a factor pair. 1 and the number will always be a factor pair. So for 45, 1 and 45. If the product was 100, your first factor, factor pair could be 1 and 100. Back to 32. What else makes 32? Well, 2 and 16 make 32. 4 and 8 make 32. What else makes 45? We have 1 and 45. 3 and 15 make 45. 5 and 9 make 45. Last two products, 70 and 80. Pause the video while you write down as many factor pairs that you can think of for 70 and 80. Okay, remember it's always going to be 1 in the number, so 1 in 70. 2 and 35. 5 and 14. 7 and 10. And for 80, the first one's going to be 1 in 80. 2 and 40, 4 and 20, 5 and 16, 8 and 10. That one has a lot of factor pairs. Very good. Now, for our math message, it says to record a basic multiplication fact with a product of 63. So, here we have the product 63. Your task is to write the basic fact that makes 63. What do you think? What did you come up with? 7 times 9 equals 63. Or maybe you had 9 times 7. Either way is correct because they are both the basic fact that gives you the product of 63. Now I have four facts below. 6 times 10, 7 times 10, 6 times 9, 8 times 9. Which facts, whoop, which facts have a product that is greater than 63? Well, 6 times 10 is 60. So that won't work. 7 times 10 is 70. Well, that will work. We'll circle that. 6 times 9 is 54. So that won't work. 8 times 9 is 72. That will work. Let's go back and look at our original problem, 7 times 9. I wanted something that was greater than 63. So if this problem was 6 times 9, well, 6 is less than 7. 
So right away, that's going to give me the clue that that is not going to work. That will not be greater than 63. Then we have 8 times 9. Well, that's more than 7 times 9. So that's going to have to be greater than 63. Okay. So we're going to play, I'm going to give you the directions anyway, to play the game called Product Pileup. I have put these directions in your folder, but let's go through them. You're going to need your number cards, all the ones, twos, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, tens. It says four of each or as many that uh, that you have. This is a game for three players. And the skill is to just to work on practicing your multiplication facts of one to ten. And the object of the game is to play all of your cards. So let's go over the directions. You're going to take turns being the dealer. You shuffle and deal eight cards to each player and then put the rest of the deck number side down. The player to the left of the dealer begins. This player selects two cards from your hand, from the cards that you already have, and you place them number side up on the table. You multiply the numbers and you say the product aloud. So for example, right down here, Joe plays a three and a six. Joe needs to multiply those. And he says three times six equals 18. All right. So the play continues with each player laying two cards with a product greater than the product of the last two cards played. If a player states an incorrect product, other players may suggest a helper fact or strategy to help the product. So here are Joe's cards, three and six. He multiplied them and he says three times six equals 18. Then Rachel looks at two, looks at her hand. And you remember, you can look at the cards in your hand and she's going to find, hopefully, two cards with a product greater than 18. She plays and lays down five and four and says five times four equals 20. Then it's the next person's turn. And that person, of course, is gonna to wanna to try to find two cards in their hand that when they multiply them, they get a product greater of 20. So number four, if a player is not able to play two cards with a greater product, the player draws two cards from the deck. If the player is now able to make a greater product, those cards are played and the game continues. If he still cannot make a greater product, he needs to keep his cards and say pass and the next person goes. This is a fun game and it's a great way to practice your multiplication facts. Then when you're finished playing the game, here is a page in your math journal, page 275, where you are reviewing area and perimeter. Okay. Now remember, the perimeter is the distance around the outside of the shape, and the area is what's inside. Okay. So if I had a rectangle and this side was five, and this side was two, and I needed to find the perimeter, I know that in a rectangle, opposite sides are equal, so that would be five, and this would be two, and then I would just add all of those together. Five plus five is 10, two plus two is four, so the perimeter would be 14, and we'll say inches. The area, is what's on the inside. And we know about multiplying numbers. So I'm just going to get rid of what I wrote here, some of it. When I have a rectangle and two sides are labeled, to find the area, I just need to multiply these two numbers. So two times five equals 10. So my area is 10 square, remember we have to put that in for area, 10 square inches. So work on this page on area and perimeter, and then math boxes, page 276. Good luck, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.